This is Donald Parham of the L.A. Chargers, and you're listening to Chargers Unleashed, part of the L.A. Football Network. Stay jiggy. Three, two, one. This is Chargers Unleashed Podcast. Here are your hosts, Dan Wolfenstein and Jake Hefner. Welcome to another edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Hefner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. Today's show, of course, is being brought to you by UFC Fin Temecula, Golden Road Brewery, Charger, Bolt Family, Tick Pick, and Bet Online. If this is your first time tuning in, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on our YouTube channel. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. Dan Wolkenstein, the key word today is mandatory. Mm. Mandatory mini camps have just begun, which means we're that much closer to the 2022 NFL regular season for your Los Angeles Chargers. <sighs> it feels yeah, good to say that, but I know that come three days from now, we're going to be right back in the purgatory that I hate. But anywho, Dan Wolkenstein, how are you, sir? You actually had a very nice weekend coming off of the Donald Parham gathering with the Die Hard Bolt Club. Before we get into things, uh, tell us about your weekend. Uh, weekend was great. I want to hear about your weekend as well. Uh, but Donald Parham event was amazing. Shout out to Enrique and everyone at the Die Hard Bolt Club. Uh, Jen Mills was there. Tony Rodella was there. Uh, and a whole bunch of Chargers fans were there at Chicky Chicky Wings in Fontana. The place is absolutely packed. Standing room only. Line wrapped around the entire restaurant to get memorabilia and pictures and stuff with Donald Parham. Jake. Donald Parham is freaking huge. Like, I know we know he's 6'8", but when you see him next to every other human in that restaurant, you realize, like, 6'8's a big dude. Uh, but more importantly, just to see him out there happy, healthy, 100%, excited for the year to come, uh, out there with the fans. It was such a cool event. Shout out to Diner Bolt Club. And just as a tease, there's going to be many more events with some special guests, so stay tuned other than that, weekend was great. Uh, weather was great. Sunshine out here in Southern California. Jake, how was your weekend? Before we pay the bills, let's ask how the weekend was. Well, before I tell you that, you know, two weeks ago, we met up at 50-50 Slater down in Pasadena with Zion Johnson. Obviously, size-wise, from a width standpoint, Zion's got Donald B. But we took that picture next to Zion Johnson. And obviously, he's a big man within himself. When you took the picture next to Parham, how did how did <laughs> how did it measure up between the two? Was it like noticeably like that much bigger? I mean, oh, I know yes. we're talking about yes. about a three to four inch difference here. Like, I'm still. pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm up to like his chest. Wow. At least you got up to Zion's shoulder when yes. you took the picture, right? So, wow, that's yeah, that's something. So, um, but no, it was great. Event was great. Uh, I, and sidebar, Jake, Zion Johnson. We've had Isaiah Spiller. We've had Daniel Jeremiah. We've had quite the last three or four weeks. A mega crossover. It's been a <laughs> hell of a month. It's been a hell of a month. And we're in the Let's offseason. keep this train Let's going. Train. Jake, how are you, my friend? I'm good. As I was mentioning last week, I had that poker game. I finished fourth. Does Not that way. mean I walked away with any money? Absolutely not. I still <laughs> lost. And then, of course, when I lost, the three remaining guys decided, it's like, so, uh, you want to just do one, two, three, divvy up the money? I'm like, the fuck dude i just i was just here <laughs> we couldn't have come to this agreement 10 minutes ago what the hell is going on outside of that I went to a great family friends wedding um that i have known for 30 plus years now fantastic time um and then sunday was just relaxing sir sunday was oh no i take that back sunday i went and saw the new jurassic world movie one to ten you know i'll put it in a I'll put it as six. You know, I, I wouldn't say that it was as bad as the critics are slamming it for, but definitely my least favorite out of the new trilogy. Second worst for me overall of the six. But, you know, I'll give it a six. It had its entertaining moments when the dinosaurs were on. Um, you know, t- teaser, not necessarily a spoiler, but for those of you that were looking forward to the legacy characters, of Jeff Goldblum, Sam Neill, Laura Dern. Uh, they are not just in it for a cameo. I mean, 15 minutes in the movie, they're there, and they're there for the rest of the movie. So they have a pretty 
intricate, yet let's just call it interesting part to play in the movie. But, eh, you know, was it how I would have closed out the trilogy? <laughs> no. <laughs> but... Well, uh, let's go from blockbuster movies that may have flopped to blockbuster as in the Chargers. And we talk about defensive line. I know Sebastian Joseph Day talked about that might be... It was him that talked about blockbuster being the code name or the nickname for the defensive line group, right? It was Brennan Fajoko. Sebastian Joseph Day was the one who hated it. That oh, th- Thank you for correcting me. Um, so, blockbuster Chargers this year. We've got... Donald Parham that we just talked about. He's healthy back. We've got Derwin updates. By the way, Derwin James uh, might be doing some contract stuff as well as we heard about some surgery news today. Question mark, exclamation point. Uh, Joey Bosa now at training camp with everyone. JT Woods has now signed. I believe that's all of the signings have been done for our rookies. And then some press conference takeaways this week from both Brandon Staley as well as Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. Um, Jake, before we get into kind of the Derwin James updates to kind of start this thing off, let's pay the bills. Tell them about how they can make the money. Yeah, let's talk about our partners over at Bet Online as they continue to be the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. Find all of the latest odds, news, and sports development, including this year's basketball championship in the NBA Finals, the NHL, uh, the NHL Stanley Cup now that we have between the Avalanche and the Lightning. Major League Baseball, the fast fighting news of the UFC, and even even next year's NFL futures. Again, just bring me to September. Damn it, I just need football back in my life. Head on over to the website to use your mo- or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code B L E A V to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts. Jake, bet online real quick. Game six or game seven. NBA Finals, who wins it? You know, I still say it goes it goes back to San Francisco, Game 7. Does Steph have a better game than what he had in Game 5? Yes. Does that mean it's too much to overcome Boston in Boston? I say no, but I say Golden State will finish it in 7. All right, so that's where your money's going. All right, so uh, let's talk Chargers, shall we? Uh, we heard... Some good news and some questionable news that got a little flushed out today uh, regarding a one Derwin James. Uh, not only did we hear that he came off of a surgery this offseason that happened, I believe it was week three, I want to say, in Kansas City. Uh, and then afterwards, we then found out that there are preliminary discussions and Derwin James might get a new contract done by the start of the season. Uh, Jake, when you heard the news of the Derwin James surgery, scale of one to 10, how freaked out were you? Tell us about the injury. I was at a, like a three. I mean, come on. First off, we've we've seen him do this. Then you actually do some digging and you listen to Brandon Staley's comments, which he addressed, saying that when he ended up getting the surgery following the end of last season, it was it's been done a long time ago. Many He's recovered. Ago. And if we know anything about Brandon Staley, when he's talking about players that are coming back from injury, i.e. ones that he mentioned today, Khalil Mack, Mark Webb, and of course, Derwin James, the quarterback of your defense, he's going to take everything with every precaution necessary to make sure that when they set foot on the field, that they are 100%. So as he was talking about today, Staley was just sitting James out for pure precautionary reasons. And it was a torn labrum, correct? It was a torn labrum. But to think that he suffered that in week three and continued to play throughout the rest of the season on that is pretty damn good. So, and labrums are tricky because they only in certain circumstances, you know, depending on how bad the tear is, is surgery necessarily required. So it was probably something that he could grit through. Surgery wasn't required. And obviously it doesn't sound like he did anything, um, could have done anything worse to to the shoulder so it sounds like the surgery has gone has been well it was done a long time ago it's old news and we'll just be ready to see him out there when we finally get into the seven on sevens yes so crisis averted uh and then jake we might be seeing a contract extension for a one derwin james i mean are we are we surprised by that no not even a little bit no (laughs) a little bit i think the only question 
The only question people had was if it was going to happen before the season started. Um, I know I remember like with Keenan Allen, it happened early on. Joey Bosa, I think it happened like the day of the day or like the moment he walked in to, I think it was the preseason or training camp, I forget what it was. Um, I kind of foresee that same similar thing happening with Derwin James too. Uh, does he become the highest paid safety? I mean, he'll be up there. I can't fully say that he would given, you know, that he has, missed time with injuries during the tenure of his rookie deal. So I, I can't say for sure, but who knows? The important thing is, is that you get this done as quickly as possible. Uh, they said that their goal is to get it done before the regular season starts. And when you start looking at the DBs of the other teams that are out there in the league, guys who have big contracts coming up and going into contract years this year, this should be a no brainer for the chargers to do. And when you look at the rest of the contracts that they have done, i.e., look at what, (laughs) look at what everybody was freaking out about the contract about Mike Williams, when he signed his deal right before free agency. And then the most bonkers wide receiver free agency period that we can ever remember seeing happened. And now that deal looks like a bargain. So in retrospect, you sign a playmaker like Derwin James, as much as uh, Brandon Staley has lauded him for being the quarterback at the defense. There's no question that the Chargers were going to invest in him and re-sign him. There was, there was no way that they were going to be able to let him out, let him walk out the door. Uh, and now when the numbers come out, compared to what guys may get down the line, it may end up being a pretty marketable deal. Yeah. So, uh, yes, Derwin James most likely will be signed to a contract extension before the season starts. Uh, music to all of our ears. Can't wait for just that to get done. Not to worry about it. Um, all right, moving on. So we had a few press conferences. Uh, a one, Braden Staley, Khalil Mack, and Joey Bosa came to the press conference. Um, Brandon Staley off the top, which kind of leads into Joey Bosa a little bit. Um, Brandon Staley had a quote that was interesting where he said, I think that we've had an outstanding offseason program. I'm really appreciative of our attendance. It's been perfect attendance. To have the full group here today and to be able to finish our offseason the right way is important. I like the vibe out there. I like the focus, the detail. I think we're controlling the things that are within our control right now. And you saw perfect attendance, Jake. Joey Bosa decided to take a flight across the country and come to camp. Which, has he done that in like since he was a rookie? Uh, I don't recall him. I don't think it. he no. has. So, but Joey normally has his own, he has own training thing. regimen that he does before training camp really gets going. Sure. But to see some of these like veterans who do not need to prove themselves worth a lick at training camp with the new guys, and Staley talks about kind of the importance of kind of getting everybody acclimated to one another, to see guys like Keenan Allen, like Derwin James, like Joey Bosa, like I mean, Justin Herbert, even what does he have to do? Like he doesn't have to prove himself, but these, all these guys are out there uh, as if they're at the rookie season. They know how special this roster is. Uh, I, we'll talk about it in, in a little bit here, but a lot of people talked about like the potential of this team and they know there's something special and they could potentially win it all considering what they saw happen last year in the playoffs. Um, Jake, in terms of like takeaways from br- the Brandon Staley press conference specifically, uh, what were some of the bigger ones you had? I mean, outside of him kind of just giving some player updates on, you know, injured players coming back and guys who were participating today and obviously the full attendance, I really just took away what kind of what he actually said. One of the bigger takeaways was what he said yesterday during media day. And when they were talking about the expectations for this upcoming season, the first thing that still he says is, you know, half the guys that we had on this team, are not here right now. <laughs> and wild. so he ba- he basically just said that you're going to have to rely on the players to dictate the culture and the way that the um I kept I'm I'm now paraphrasing here but basically the mindset moving forward in all three phases of the game both offensively defensively on special teams. So he obviously takes a lot of pride in getting to know his players. And obviously he has a lot of new faces to get to know this year. Obviously he's got some familiarity with some big names that he had a key hand in bringing over. (laughs) And from his standpoint, he emphasized again that 
he's not seeing all of this for the first time anymore. This is year two. He feels like he's further along now than where he was last year in terms of his readiness, his preparation, and the same with the rest of the guys coming in because, hey, guess what? Justin Herbert didn't have to change an offensive scheme for the first time in six years. So continuity, people, it's a beautiful thing to have. It is. Uh, Brandon said he talks about kind of the the types of guys that are now in this locker room. He, he said, when you bring in the, the right type of guys, they like playing ball. I think that's what we've done. We've brought in a bunch of guys that really like playing ball and like doing all the hard parts of football. It's exciting to join up with this group for sure. Uh, you mentioned some of the guys that were uh, either injured or coming back. He mentioned Mark Webb. He mentioned, this is interesting, Jake. He talked about like how important he was and how much of a role he was going to have last year before the injury. And he expects big things from him this year. Excited to see him compete. But him expecting a lot from Mark Webb kind of perked my ears because like that's one of the names that you don't really think of at first when you're thinking about this like secondary. Everybody talks about Derwin, Azir Adderley, J.C. Jackson, Asante Samuel. Mark Webb was kind of a darling for a bit before getting injured last year. Yeah, former seventh round pick last year at 2021. And people should take note of Brandon Staley mentioning that. And not only mentioning him, but speaking that strongly Doesn't about do that with him. him. That they have a lot of expectations for him this year. That they felt that he was a guy that was going to get a lot more playing time before he ended up going down with his injury last year. And Dan, we said it on the mega crossover. Was It, it was Haglin that, that brought up the name, if I'm right. Guilty as charged, Steve Haglin. We said who were some guys that would be, possibly be surprise cuts come the regular season. And Haglin was quick enough to note Alohi Gilman. Because when you look at all the moves that have been done now in the secondary, he could be one of these guys that's on the outside looking in. And now you see the expectation and the praise from Brandon Staley today when Mark's not even fully practicing yet. So there's a lot of expectations that they can do that they have for him, obviously with his skill set and versatility uh, from coming out of college. There's a lot of places that you can put Mark Webb. And he was having a very strong preseason and earlier and very early in the regular season, just before he went down, he was showing some good flashes early on in his rookie season. So happy to hear that type of praise and those expectations that they have for him. And hopefully Mark Webb can come back, uh, off the injury and, and be successful. Yeah. And you think, I mean, I haven't heard, a, I haven't heard Staley say a word about Alohi Gilman this off season, which one doesn't really say anything well, but then you think about like athleticism, right? Like Nazir Adderley, you got Mark Webb, you've got JT Woods. Now you've got Derwin James. Like at this point at best, Alohi Gilman is probably safety five at best. I mean, that's not a bad number to start with. <laughs> it's not a bad number to start with. That's for sure. No. Um, so Mark Webb was the guy he talked about. Another guy he talked about, Jake, which I thought was interesting, was uh, Bryce Callahan. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody asked him like, what was kind of important about him or what, they, what he liked about him. And, and Brandon said they talked about the, his calmness and his impressive processing and diagnosis abilities and mentioned his unique combination of quickness and lower body strength along with long speed, which I thought was interesting. He said that usually quickness and deep speed is a rare thing to have. I'm paraphrasing, but those two things together are rare. Either you have quick or you have deep speed. He said he likes the fact that Callahan has both, and with his lower body strength, he doesn't get bullied around very often. So he's pretty high on Callahan, specifically in a slot. So... Um, the secondary is going to have a whole lot of competition. And I think to that, that's Brandon Staley's probably favorite thing about this off season is he, he talked about it. Like there's going to be secondaries brought in every single year. And this year he brought in like six. So, <laughs> well, Dan, you touched on this a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the secondary, even we, when we were talking about it, when JC Jackson was brought into this team. So, not to make a big deal about this, because nobody should. We're talking about the first day of mandatory minicamps. Let's not forget, people, we're still in June. So take this with a grain of salt, okay? Sure. So here was your starting secondary that was out there during 11-on-11s in nickel package. Nasir Adderley, J.C. Jackson, we're at safety, Asante Samuel Jr., and uh, J.C. Jackson. 
or sorry, <laughs> James Nasir Hatterley were at safety. J.C. Jackson and Asante Samuel Jr. were your outside quarterbacks, and Bryce Callahan was at nickel defending the slot. So who am I not talking about? Not talking. I didn't mention Michael Davis, who was the rotating tall athletic guy. In. Yeah, <laughs> who was rotating in as an outside cornerback with the second team. Okay, so however much weight you want to put into that, go nuts. Feel free if you want to. It probably th- doesn't I, mean much in in. June I think it does. I think it does. I think it no, does. I think it's three. three. I, I'm not saying that it means nothing. I'm I'm just saying. You said it, Dan. There it there could be a considerable argument that Mike Davis, even with his contract right now, as far as DBs goes, uh, specifically the cornerback unit, he's the second highest paid one out of the four that we've just mentioned. And yet he's going to be starting off as CB4 in the second team? See, I, should say, C, I should say CB3 on the outside, CB4 in totality, yes. Right. So that was a little bit interesting to me. So will th- will those snaps and those playing times change? Yes, I'm sure that he's going to get a nice rotation with the first team in there for someone who's been in this defense as long as he has. Now, am I trying to poo-poo this in any way? No, because we've heard all along now, since even before the draft started, Daniel Parper had said, the Chargers may no longer be as high on Michael Davis as once thought, even coming off of the contract extension that they gave him just two short years ago. So take that for what you will. However much salt you want to pour into that grain, be my guest and go for it. (laughs) Dan Wolgenstein, you were the one that kind of said it as far as the expectations goes. CB4, big deal or not a big deal? For who? For Mike Davis, definitely a big deal. Yes. Uh, For the Chargers, not a big deal. Um, I think they probably will... Uh, deploy him as kind of a, a matchup based assignment. Um, but it's hard to argue him being any higher than that. Like, he's not going to beat out JC Jackson and he's not quicker than Asante. And I, from a slot perspective, there's no way he's better than Bryce or Asante. So <laughs> I don't know. At this point, it almost feels like more of an insurance policy for J.C. Jackson or depth for Asante? See, this this is where J.C. Jackson has thrown such a good wrench into this Chargers secondary because the, do I think that this is going to kick Mike Davis back to CB4? Possibly. Do I think that that means that he's going to be seeing less to him on the field? Possibly. But remember what Brandon Staley keeps talking about wanting to be multiple on this team, specifically as it relates to the secondary. Definitely don't want to be finishing last in the league in third down defense anymore. So I think he's going to have a bunch of different packages prepared because even still, for as many of us, Dan and I agree from the down year that Mike Davis had, from a physicality standpoint and those measurables, you can't you can't knock that. And Mike Davis still is one of your faster cornerbacks that you have sure. on this team. So I think Staley's still going to find the every single way possible to utilize him in the right way in order for him to be ultimately productive. But how about this for a question, Dan? Is this going to be the final year that Mike Davis is on this team. Even with the contract situation, right? It was, I believe it was a, what, three-year deal that he signed? Mm -hmm. I think so. I, I don't see how it's not his last year, which is kind of crazy, but given the contracts across the team, across the defense, and given the guys that you just drafted, would you spend nine million dollars on a CB three or four? I don't know many GMs that would. Not so, particularly. I, uh, could he be on the trading block? You never know. Um, should be interesting. So uh, we talked about Joey Bosa being back, um, and and I think the him being at OTAs is obviously something new, and it's not something that usually happens with him. 
And, and Brandon said he talks about him spending that extended period of time with the team. He said, I, I think it's important that he's joining up with some new guys, both with Khalil, Kyle, and then with the new guys, whether it's Austin Johnson, Sebastian Joseph Day, Otito Vaniga, and then Morgan Fox. He has a bunch of new players that he's rushing with and playing the running with. We really wanted to make sure that the chemistry started to express itself in the springtime. Jake, we're already hearing Staley talk about expressing things. Love when he starts talking about that. Um, Joey Bosa has a crap ton of new players on his defense. And so I think he, I think it was Joey. He mentioned one of the coaching staff was like calling him constantly telling him to come into OTAs and finally decided that he was going to go in. Yes. It was a change of scenery. Yes. It was a change of habit from what he's done years prior, but I think he's talked about uh, how much he's liked it and what he's gotten out of it. So Joey Bosa, big bear is also shown now at OTAs. And so Staley talked about perfect attendance, uh, barring the injury stuff, which it hasn't happened and we're past those. So like, it's amazing to see whether it's veterans, all-stars, pro bowls, rookies all together. It's a new team, but it's year two for Staley and a lot of dudes that know this scheme now in its second year. Yeah, this is, I really actually liked how this whole thing with Bosa arriving for, mandatory mini camp came about because as he as he um has expressed him and his brother nick they usually go off and they do their own thing and they go down to florida and they tr they train together um around this time of the year so sometimes they show up sometimes they don't but they're just not usually there for you know the the initial parts of this so this was encouraging especially to hear that it was coach smith who has recently shifted over from the being the interior defensive line coach and is now coaching the outside linebackers. So it was Coach Smith who actually was calling Bosa and encouraging him to get his butt down to Southern California early. <laughs> and again, you're talking about a coach that has been with Joey Bosa since he arrived on this team. He's actually one of the longest tenured coaches to go through the Mike McCoy coaching tree, the Anthony Lynn coaching tree, and now retained obviously for Brandon Staley's coaching tree. So coach Smith's voice obviously matters to Joey. And I thought that that was just an interesting thing to say that to, of all people that it was coach Smith that actually was calling him early. It wasn't a player. Do you think coach, like that? You think coach Smith called him last year? I, he could have, who knows? And, and maybe, and maybe, and this is kind of what Joey went into in his next sentence was just then he started going into the collected vision of what coach Staley's feeling, what the players are feeling as far as just, there's a different vibe in this team right now. There's a different vibe for where they feel that they can go this year and what they can do. So I'm sure that that was probably the intangibles of it, but hearing that coach Smith, not a player, a coach Smith was able to reach out to him and encourage him to come down to mandatory camp. Um, I liked that story. I really did. I thought that was yeah. cool. Yeah, and both have talked about kind of like the the cohesiveness of this team and the defense specifically. And he kind of went into detail of, of Brandon Staley's second year. Uh, and he said, I think year two is definitely a great opportunity because being together all last year, it's really hard to make things work in the first year together under a new scheme, new coaches, everything. I think that we have a great opportunity having a lot of guys that have been in it for a year now. He's bringing in guys that he's known from other teams, so it's kind of becoming a nice, cohesive unit. And he says that apparently from here on now, he says that he'll he's going to start making it out there now a week or two early before ma a mandatory mini camps starts. Oh. So, how about that? Interesting. <laughs> and then uh, Khalil Mack came up to the podium. And uh, had some things to say. Um, what, one of the things that stood out to me before I go to you, Jake, I, he had he had talked about like people were asking him about the familiarity with with Staley and the defense and everything. And, and Staley talked about like how he sees Khalil Mack obviously progressing health wise, but also like him getting comfortable in the scheme, comfortable in the system, to where like it looks like he's ready to go. And he said that you know of, of all people, obviously Khalil Mack knows his body more than anyone. But Brandon said he also can see when he is comfortable in, in the system. Uh, but he said, he being Khalil Mack said, that's the thing. Strangely enough, defensive calls are pretty much all the same. It's just different wording. 
just figuring out all the different tangibles as far as what Coach Staley and the defensive staff want for myself, first and foremost, making sure I'm able to affect games the way I know how to affect games. You heard from Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, kind of that mutual respect from each other about what each other brings to the game. I think Joey Bosa talked about they have a very different play style, which I think is going to suit them very well. Um, Khalil Mack is excited, man. He, I think he talked about like loving the vibe in LA, talked about the food, talked about the culture here, talked about kind of the locker room. Um, I still can't believe Khalil Mack is a charger, dude. Still can't believe it. Yeah, it's it's much in the same circumstance, I, you know, from Staley's perspective as it relates to Khalil Mack. It's again just being more precautionary. He's he's kept Mack from doing any full speed individual drills during the springtime, but all indications are, according to Staley, that he's going to be ready for training camp. He's just trying to get him acclimated, get him up to full speed to where he knows, and he's even said this today in his press conference, to where he knows that he can do it the way that he's used to doing it as fast as he wants to do it and just, you know, where where, where he's getting himself right. So that was encouraging. And then, yeah, listening to him and Joey Bosa just kind of just, you know, talk about playing next to one another. Dan, as you mentioned, picking each other's brains a little bit, learning from one another while they have this the different play style. They think that there's definitely some things that they can learn from one another. I like how Joey emphasizes, like, it's probably not going to change either hit him or eyes the way we play, but we could probably pull some things, you know, here and there from one another. So that was a cool thing to hear as far as just their, their gelling is already coming together, it seems like. Yeah, Brandon today talks about Kenneth Murray's health kind of progressing well. Talked about a lot him. of people have been talking about Kenneth Murray's health progressing. Yes, so uh, <laughs> or wondering if it will. Right. Um, so overall, like we're hearing all the things we want to hear. We're seeing all the things we want to see. We're well, it's June. Of- Ex- expectations are through the roof. For we're going to go. We're going to go seventeen and zero. Yep. So is every team, and every team is going to win the Super Bowl this year. Yes. Um, JT Woods, Jake, signed his rookie contract, which I believe that puts all of our rookies now signed. (laughs) And if you're looking at this, this is actually a question I was thinking of when I heard about the news. JT Woods, Nazir Adderley, Derwin James, Mark Webb, Alohi Gilman. Am I missing anyone? In the safety safety position specifically? Covered. Where would JT Woods fit in that? In terms, like, is he is he safety three? Yes. Without so he's question. above. You think he's above Mark Webb? Without question. Without okay. question. And we've talked about this, and so have the draft pundits, i.e., our very own Daniel Jeremiah has talked about this. This is the chess piece, essentially, that's going to assist you in moving Derwin James all around the field. So I'll be interested to hear about his ramp up period throughout training camp, because I think that the expectations that they have for him, while we were just talking about the high expectations for Mark Webb a few minutes ago, the expectations for JT Wood are that much higher. And look how he starts it off. Tipped ball, gets an interception today in the red zone. Nice little start for the rookie. Regression for Justin Herbert, Jake. I think we're going to have to trade him now. (laughs) Yo. (laughs) Eat, look, listen to me just for a second, okay? Even if this was not a tipped ball, for those who don't know, it was a tipped ball that went off the hands of Donald Parham today, and it and as they labeled it, a shoelace interception, which was, it was basically almost hit the ground, and JT Woods was able to scoop it before it hit the ground and have it for an interception, which was great. Even if it wasn't that, even if it was just a straight ball, Justin Herbert didn't see him. Whatever it is, okay. Be more excited about a rookie defender like that picking off one of the better quarterbacks in the league than looking at it through a different keyhole and thinking that that's Justin Herbert regressing because Justin Herbert's never played across from JT Woods before, nor has JT Woods played across Justin Herbert before. That old saying, iron sharpens iron. Both guys are going to get better from this. And hopefully the one thing that really plagued the Chargers last year in terms of the dropped balls. Let's cut down on those. Let's have that be the focus. If you're going to be pissed off about anything, be upset that it was a tipped ball for crying out loud. On both sides of the ball. Like if we can have drop balls no longer happening from our secondary as well as from our receiving core slash tight end, 
uh, we'll be in a much better situation. Too many people were freaking out about an interception in June during mandatory mini camp. Off a tipped pass. (laughs) Come on now. (laughs) Guys. So, um, look, we talked about all kinds of things, kind of went all across the gamut in terms of some of the updates. Uh, Jake, was there anything else in terms of kind of key takeaways? What I know Daniel Popper put out an article that talks about kind of the key takeaways that he had. I know we talked about some of the press conferences and things. Um, Anything that I missed or that you wanted to kind of go over? I mean, seventh round pick Dean Leonard apparently had himself a good day today. Um, Oh. Yeah. Three pass breakups, albeit, yes. We're talking about third string defense here. We are talking about Easton Stick at quarterback here throwing the ball. So, you know, the barometer is not <laughs> sky high for what we're talking about. The, the, the level of, of what we should be taking into account here. But still, for a guy who's really trying to play his way onto the team and, and now all of a sudden a crowded secondary group, it's a great start from Dean Leonard on defense. Yeah, and, and again, like if... Are we expecting Dean Leonard to be starting the season? Like, no, like he's, he's not going to have a starting spot, but is it a good sign that he's outperforming the third string guys? Yes. That probably means that he's fighting for second string, uh, which I think is a good sign for him. Um, And how about this one, Dan? Again, going back to the 11 on 11s in the nickel package, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, obviously lining up at edge rusher. And then you have Kyle Van Noy and Troy reader were at inside linebacker. Now calm down Uh-oh. or if you're asking yourself sirens what the hell. obviously there's a number nine who's still injured there's a reason obviously that he's not out there kyle van noy and i think that there's Andrew a Trankle, reason where is he? right i i don't know where drew tranquil was in this <laughs> circumstance but honestly guys i wouldn't worry about that just don't worry about that. Nobody's going to be coming in and all of a sudden unseating drew tranquil from his starting spot at uh at inside or at uh, inside linebacker, but Kyle Van Noy, this is really interesting because a lot of people have been talking about this. Dan, I still see him as edge three for this team. I see him only stepping in at inside linebacker should it be an emergency situation. But Van Noy is still getting asked this question. So is Brandon Staley, and both of them have played it pretty close to the chest. Uh-huh. Brandon Staley will not name him an edge defender or an inside linebacker. And they have apparently come to this agreement that they have this plan and how they're going to utilize him. Could it be a mixture of both? Who knows? I would assume that that's what's going to be it on certain packages. I mean, it's nice when you could say that your edge three is Kyle Van Noy. I mean, that's you could just stop your sentence right there and feel good about it. But this will be interesting to to see how Staley and um, more notably Ronaldo Hill is going to employ him on defense. Yeah, the the last quote or the last um, press conference thing that I found that was actually kind of funny was I think it was Daniel Popper was asking Joey Bosa uh, about Chris Rumpf and he asked him about his nicknames. I think he's called like String this Bean or great. Green Bean, and this is um, great. and he said no, he's got a little bigger than that. He's no longer Green Bean, but maybe or String Bean, but maybe he's he's asparagus now. And the whole room just busted up laughing. Yes. So I guess asparagus is now going to be his new nickname no longer diamond in the rump asparagus <laughs> so i guess green beans can grow up too uh jake anything else i want to tell the good people i know this is a rapid fire episode all kinds of stuff going over um anything else you want to discuss before we head out of here i think that's it we'll see what uh the next day of mandatory mini camp has to offer see if we can you know, get any more play highlights. There wasn't that many big notable ones uh, outside of the ones that we had already described, but um, it's good to see the team back, especially in full participation mode, having the entire team there and getting started. This is the type of preparation that's going to lead to a nice or should lead to a nice training camp, but we always got to enjoy these times because after this, we go right back into purgatory <laughs> and, yep. and it's the time I hate, trust me. So Itching to get to training camp, itching to get to August to start preseason. We're so close. God. I remember just a few short years ago, Dan, when just nobody wanted preseason football. Who are they? I don't know, but I will fight you for those people <laughs> that believe that because I'm sorry. I need football in August. I, I need it. I know some people may feel like it's useless, but 
if I had to go honestly from February to the following September uh, for any legitimate type of football or just any re- any semblance of football, because I know some people don't consider preseason valuable whatsoever. Um, yeah, I might lose it. I might lose it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Um, so uh, I will say for folks who have not seen, Drew Tranquil has a podcast. Uh, I believe he has Should Brandon a good Staley up on, I think he said it was coming out Thursday. Tomorrow. Well, I thought it was uh, tomorrow, actually. I think he came out afterwards and said, oh, shoot, I saw today was Wednesday. No, so oh. it's, I think it's actually Thursday. Okay. Uh, so be on the job for that. Excited to see that. Drew Tranquil has a great, great podcast, great interviewer. Uh, he had one with... Um, Justin Herbert a few weeks back, which is fantastic. Encourage you guys to listen to that. Um, But until then, uh, we'll probably be coming to you one more time this week before we get to the weekend. Uh, For Jake Hefter, you can find him at Jake T. Hefter. Myself at Chargers Homer. Again, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, turn on the bell notifications so you can find out what we're doing next. Uh, We are not done. We have some special things brewing here on Chargers Unleashed and LA Football. So be sure to keep tuning in, be sure to subscribe, and we will talk to you next time on Chargers Unleashed.